The palette of Namir is a finely decorated plate and is a part of the permanent collection of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. In ancient Egypt, palettes had the functional use of applying cosmetics from as far as the years 3000 BC. However, the palette of Namir is a ceremonial piece and is so high value that it is not allowed to leave Egypt. Measuring at 63.5 centimeters, the palette is carved entirely out of siltstone and covered front to back with various images and sceneries. Instead of being a flat, minimally directed, decorated stone objects used for grinding and mixing materials at that time, this work contains high quality, hard to interpret imagery that is meant to be used in temple ceremonies rather than day-to-day -day life. Yes, due to its size and detail, Historians think that it was used sparingly, only for the servants to apply on the pharaohs for divine rituals. Starting off on the recto side, there are two cows with human-like faces that are at the very top of the palette. These are thought to be both the goddesses Bat and Hathor, the goddesses of motherhood, beauty, sky, joy, and sexuality. Which figures is a cirque, or a rectangular box with hieroglyphs beginning to tell a story in which Narmer is the protagonist. On the second portion of this piece, Narmer is depicted wearing an elaborate crown while marching through the stacks of dismembered bodies of his slain enemies. At the lower half, it should be noted that there is two long-necked twin mythical creatures, these serpent leopard type creatures being held back by two men. These serpent leopards are used to represent the unification of both the lower and upper half of Egypt. And at the bottom is a bull known to be shot, knocking down the, walking down the walls of a city. This bull is theorized to represent King Narmer, and it's supposed to represent the events that occurred during the year of the smiting Northland. The verso, or the backside, demonstrates King Narmer's wearing a white crown and as dressed as a as a Egyptian king, raising his mace to smite the face of a kneeling prisoner standing on the floating foes that he once killed before. In the corner, you can see a falcon, which represents the Egyptian sky god, Hor the Egyptian sky god Horus, perching on a rebus, listing all Menes has defeated. This piece was found in 1898 inside the temple of Heracolis, buried under the temple floor. The Egyptians commonly would bury all of the ritualistic items as a way to have a stronger connection to their divine being once heading into the afterlife. But since, this, but since this piece is dedicated to the building rather than any specific individual, it was buried inside the temple rather than with Narmer himself. The largest and honestly the most captivating aspect of this piece is the general theme of the unification of the upper and lower half of Egypt. Yes, present and envelops the piece on both sides showing Narmer wearing the red crown of Lower Egypt as well as the white crown of Upper Egypt, and as well as intertwining the two serpent leopards, which could be representative of the two Egypts coming together under one ruler. Whether this piece is an accurate historical depiction or, ju or just a hopeful concept represented on this palette, it is unknown. But one thing is for sure, the palette of Namir gives us a glimpse of high society in ancient Egypt.